And with that wonderful evolution, hello everybody! What is going on, dudes? It is Kiba Ishimaki here, and welcome back to what should be the last few episodes of Pokemon Emerald, or at least the main game. Last time, we made way through Victory Road and challenged, or were challenged by Wally. Now, with us making it to the end, this time, we have nothing more to do but to challenge the Pokemon League. And as you can see, my entire team is all leveled up to 55. We have Venus, holding a magnet with Psychic, Calm Mind, Double Team, and Thunderbolts. Kurogane with the Miracle Seed, having Leaf Blade, Fury Cutter, Cutter, Agility, and Rock Tomb. Nova, holding a Charcoal with Dragon Claw, Steel Wing, Fly, and Flamethrower. Krakatoa with the Silk Scarf, with Strength, Hyper Beam, Shadow Ball, and Brick Break. Choo Choo with the Quick Claw, Low Sludge Bomb, Yawn, Water Pulse, and Body Slam. And Mercy with the Mystic Water, with Ice Beam, Body Slam, Surf, and Water Ball. We're as set as we can be, and we're ready for the final challenge, but there is one thing to show. It happened again, as I had mentioned. While grinding off-screen, I ran into none other than a shiny gold bat. A quirky female gold bat with inner focus. It happened again. Quirky is neutral nature, so that's actually surprisingly good. <sighs> I literally just chucked Ultra Balls non-stop until I caught it. Thankfully, I caught it on my third one, but I only had 20 to work with, and if I had to waste my Master Ball, I was going to do it. Other than that, yeah, I got a shiny go bat. Now I have it with me to commemorate my wonderful journey through the Hoenn region. Gosh dang it, man. Alright, now with that sign of good fortune, make sure you're all stocked up on items. I went ahead and bought a bunch of stuff. Uh, make sure that you're all set. Any TMs you want to teach, do so now. And be well prepared for the final challenge. Step up and see what these two have to say. Beyond this point, only those trainers who have collected all the gym badges are permitted to enter. Trainer, let us confirm that you have all the gym badges. Trainer, believe in yourself and your Pokemon, and go forth! Here we go. Take on the, the Pokemon League challenge. Let's do it. Good to hear this stellar music as we approach the first of the four. I'm... I'm going with Krakatoa. I feel like Krakatoa is the safest bet on this one. Let me make sure I have animations on, because I had them off the entire time I was grinding. Save up. Yep, 52 hours. It's a long, long gap. You can tell I've been at this for a while. Here we go. Welcome, Challenger. I'm Sydney of the Elite Four. I like that look you're giving me. I guess you'll give me a good match. That's good. Looking real good. Alright, you and me. Let's enjoy a battle that only can only be staged here in the Pokemon League. We have to hear this awesome battle music. Let me take on Elite Force Sydney. He starts off with a Mighty Enna, level 46, pure dark type intimidate for the ability. With the moves Roar, Double Edge, Sand Attack, Crunch. The main thing this Mighty Enna is going to probably go for is um, Roar or Sand Attack right off the bat to lower your accuracy. Roar if it notices that you're raising your own stats or have a type advantage against it. Double it for high amounts of damage even if it gets recoiled and crunch to even to lower you even further. Fortunately Krakatoa has Brick Break so we should be able to deal with this first member pretty easily and without too much trouble and we also have Kurogane with Fury Cutter to help deal with Dark Types. Sydney is a Dark Type Master so be wary of that, be prepared for whatever he throws at you and be well kept. Next up is Shift Tree. We're gonna bring out Nova for this. Shift Tree is level 48, grass dark type chlorophyll for the ability, so don't set up a sunny day. With the moves Torment, Double Team, Swagger, and Extra Sensory. The main thing this Shift Tree is gonna go for is probably double team right off the bat to make sure you cannot hit it. Swagger to raise your attack, but 
use you. Torment to prevent you from raising your own stats. And extra sensory for good amounts of damage against you. Again, this thing can be a big annoyance if you don't have moves like Flamethrower or Aerial Lace. Those would be definite helps, but of course I'm going to just make do with what we got. We have the Charcoal on Nova for this reason alone. So we're going to make it work, and hopefully we don't struggle too much against this thing. But yeah, it's going to try to double team to keep you from hitting it in general. We got a crit thing. Torment will keep you from using any stat moves so you can't raise your own stats or lower his. And Swagger, of course, will just raise your own attack stat and prevent you from uh, hurting it. Next up, he's already going out with his ace. Jeez, um... Let's go with Kurogane. I think Kurogane will be fine in this case. Ooh, actually, I'm looking, not so much. First up... Or, mainly last up, Absol, level 49, pure dark type pressure for the ability, holding a citrus berry. With the moves, aerial lace, rock slide, sword stance, and slash. This thing is going for KOs off the bat. We'll probably start off with the sword stance immediately to raise its attack stat by two stages. Going for slash to hopefully get a crit. Fortunately, we get the crit. Rock slide to lower your speed or get KO if you send out a flying type. And aerial lace if you send out a grass type like myself. Fortunately, we just clean sweeped it. Um, we keep Kurogane out. Because next up is Cacturn. Cacturn is level 46 grass dark type sand veil for the ability. So if a sandstorm is set up, its evasiveness will raise. Um, with the moves Leech Seed, Fan Attack, Needle Arm, Cotton Spore. It'll probably start off with the Leech Seed to uh, sap your health every turn. Cotton Spore to lower your speed. Fan Attack for constant damage. And Needle Arm to potentially poison you, I believe. But it's also probably one of its stronger moves. This is going to be an interesting fight nonetheless. I have Fury Cutter luckily and it's times 4 effective. So I can at least get off some good damage. He's going to keep Consporting me, trying to slow me down. But he should be okay. Fury Cutter once more. Yes, yeah, so now it's faster than me, but we should be okay. One more Fury Cutter, you're done. Perfect. And there's a crit. Nice. And. The last one up, we're gonna bring out Venus for this. It is brought on. We use Venus instead. I'd rather keep uh, experience low. Because, geez, trust me, experience can raise up pretty quickly in this. Crawdons is level 48. Water dark type hyper cutter for the ability, meaning you can't lower its, at lower its attack stat with the move Surf, Sword Dance, Strength, and Facade. I wanted to use a Venus for this mainly because it doesn't have a dark type move and it's water so I can use Thunderbolt to easily KO it. It'll make it a lot easier and we should be more than okay. It'll probably use Swords Dance right off the bat however if you're a bit lower level than me. Uh, they'll probably go on with swag or Strength for high damage, Surf as well for good special attack and Facade if you give it a status ailment. Well, how do you like that? I lost! Eh, it was fun so it doesn't matter. Get ourselves 4900 Poke Dollars. Well, listen to what this loser has to say. You got what it takes to go far. Now, go on to the next room and enjoy your next battle. Oh, we will indeed. Because next up, it's quite an interesting one. Here we go. Gonna heal up and everything. Seriously, recommend it. Go, I don't have very many moves to counter this one, so this one is gonna probably be, probably be giving me the biggest amount of trouble. I have to work with what I got. Um, I think who's the best option to go against this thing with? Do that. Blade is okay. You have a bunch of moves that I can work with. You have pretty decent moves, but none of them are going to be effective in the slightest, especially against that thing. Yours are okay, but they're not going to work that well, and Mercy can serve pretty well in this. I think I'm going to start off with Krakatoa. Krakatoa is the safest gambit in this case. So we'll see what happens. There we go. Saved up. Now let's press forward and let's talk to the next one. <laughs> I'm Phoebe of the Elite Four. I did my training on Mount Pyre. While I trained, I gained the ability to commune with ghost-type Pokemon. Yes, the bond I developed with Pokemon is extremely tight. So come on, just try and see if you can infl even inflict damage on my Pokemon. We have a battle with the Ghost-type Master, Phoebe. I love 
the Elite Four in this game. She starts off with a Dust Clops, level 48, pure Ghost type pressure for the ability. Remove Shadow Punch, Confuse Ray, Curse, and Protect. This thing is mainly meant to stall you out entirely. Yep, it'll probably start off with Protect right off the bat. Go for Confuse Ray immediately afterward to confuse you. Protect again, and then probably go for Curse to get high amounts of damage off you every single turn. Fortunately with Krakatoa, you can't hurt me with Shadow Punch, so really, we are just meant to wail on him ourselves and hope to chip him down entirely. He's probably going to go for Curse right away now, if not Confuse Ray, because Dusclops is a pretty powerful Pokemon, but it is, com it is probably one of the slowest Ghost types to exist. So it's meant to more so stall out your opponent compared to actually doing any damage. Fortunately, or more so unfortunately, we don't get off much. He's using Curse right away. Okay, well, he's KO itself, so or she's KOing her Dusclops, but that's fine for us at least. Unfortunately, we're going to get damage after every turn, unless we swap out, which is what I plan on doing, because I need to. Uh, next up is Bannet. I don't have Crunch. I think Mercy will be okay against this thing, honestly. Yeah. Now, this Bannet... Let's see. It's one of two, in all honesty. It is level 49, pure ghost type Insomnia for the ability, so you cannot put it to sleep. With the moves, Shadow Ball, Grudge, Will-O-Wisp, and Main Attack. The main thing it'll do is probably start off with a Will-O-Wisp. Never mind, well, yeah. Will-O-Wisp to raise its, um... Uh, no. To Will-O-Wisp to burn your Pokemon, meaning you can't do much damage when you're using physical type attacks. Your Grudge will, if killed the next turn, whatever move it is used to kill it, the bat move's power points will be completely depleted to zero due to Grudge. That's how it works. This Pokemon is kind of meant to annoy you with that move and prevent you from hurting it any further. Fortunately, we lucked out with that. Um, if it's still alive though, it'll probably use Fan Attack and Shadow Ball for high damage, but it'll probably finish it up with Grudge if it knows it's gonna die next turn. Next up is the second Bannet, which is level, level 49 as well, Ghost type Insomnia for the ability, with the move Shadow Ball, Psychic, Thunderbolt, Facade. This thing can be a bigger nuisance, mainly because of that Thunderbolt. It's Really just meant to completely wail on you entirely. It'll probably use whatever move it feels best for damage calculation. Shadow Ball mainly to lower special defense, even though Ghost is a physical type attack in this game. Um, Psychic, uh, if you're anything but um, a go or a dark type or Psychic type or Ghost type. Facade if you end up inflicting a status ailment on it, and then Thunderbolt again for just a high amount of damage. This Bennett isn't too much of a problem. Probably the first Bennett is the bigger worry and the bigger concern. Unfortunately, we take care of it. Next up is her last Dust Clops already. Okay. Um, I think we're going to go with... I'm not sure. Oh, we'll go with Krakatoa. Krakatoa will be the safer gambit. Her main star is, as you would guess, Dust Clops. Pure Ghost Type again, level 51 this time, holding a Citrus Berry. With the move Shadow Ball, Ice Beam, Rock Slide, Earthquake. The main thing that this uh, Dust Clop is meant for is to kind of just wail on you entirely. It has a load of moves to use that would counter any of its weaknesses. Seriously. It's really meant to just dish out extensive amounts of damage and kind of put you in a very frail state. Fortunately, its stats or its offensive stats aren't that high. Attack stat being better than special, but three of its moves are all physical, while the other one is special, which is Ice Beam. You should be able to hold out for the most part, it usually just chooses the move that will provide the most amount of damage against you, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Of course, Phoebe's going to use another full restore. All, I believe every single one of the um, Elite Four members have at least two or three to use. So, be ready, be wary, just... Stay on your toes, because trust me, it is not a good idea to take these trainers lightly. They are the top of the top for a reason. Fortunately, we take out the Dust Clops, and all that's left is Sableye. Now, this thing I was vicariously worried about, because I was not sure how I was going to take it on, but I think I have a good idea of how to do it. We're going to go with Choo Choo. Sableye, the last one. 
is level 50, Dark Ghost type, Keen Eye for the ability, which means you cannot lower its accuracy, with Blue Shadow Ball, Double Team, Nightshade, Faint Attack. Main thing, it's gonna, main thing it's gonna go for probably is Double Team right off the bat to prevent you from hitting it. Nightshade will do constant, uh, constant 50 damage, so it'll always do 50 no matter what. Shadow Ball to lower your special defense and Faint Attack for a possible KO. This thing can be a big, big annoyance. Seriously, I have Water Pulse just to chance getting a confusion against it, but we'll see what happens. Yawn for, uh, and also Water Pulse never misses, thankfully. Uh, yawn to put it to sleep as soon as we can. And yeah, all we can really do is just well in it. Being a Dark Ghost type, it has virtually no weaknesses, so pick your strongest move that will land on it that isn't normal fighting um, or psychic, and just hopefully it'll carry you all the way to the end because trust me this thing can really mess up your entire team if you're not ready for it it is more than capable of KOing everything and keeping itself from getting hit in all situations fortunately we're done with it it's out of the way we can move on to the other two which we'll tackle in the next part we've defeated Phoebe oh darn I've gone and lost we get 5100 Poké Dollars nice there's a definite bond between you and your Pokemon, too. I didn't recognize it, so it's only natural that I lost. Yep, I'd like to see how far your bond will carry you. Go ahead, move on to the next room. Thank you for that, and we shall do that next time. Hope you guys did enjoy, and I'll look forward to see how you did next time. Peace out, everybody.